In the last class, we discussed the basic concept about the normal distribution and the continuous random variable, how to find the median of the continuous random variable. And today we'll just solve few questions to get an idea about this. Okay, so just quickly solve this question and try to be quick. Okay, let's try to see this question. What is actually happening in this? The standard deviation of a normal distribution. So we are given that the distribution is normal. Okay, so the next thing is, the standard deviation of the normal distribution is two. So let's call standard deviation as two. And three standard deviation below the mean is greater than 43. Okay, so if you just draw the normal distribution curve, this is center. That's kind of one deviation below the mean, two standard deviation and three standard deviation. So the question is saying three standard deviation below the mean. So how can we write this? mean and three standard deviation below is how much greater than 43. So these are two. So we know that standard deviation is two. Just substitute that in this, this will be mean minus three into two, which is greater than 43. So mean minus six is greater than 43 and mean is greater than 43 plus six which is greater than 49. And we have only one option that is greater than 49. That's why the mean, the answer to this question is E, which is 50. Now try this question. And again, try to be quick. Okay, now let's see what is actually happening here. A certain characteristic in a large population has a distribution that is symmetric, right? This is symmetric, that's mean this is a normal distribution about the mean, which is M. If 68% of distribution lies within one standard deviation, okay, so as this is symmetric and within one standard deviation, there are 68% data set. So that mean on the either side, how much? 34% and 34%. We are not concerned with how much are within two standard deviation or three standard deviation. Because if this is 34 and this is symmetric, this one has to be total 16%. The question is saying, what percent of distribution is less than, this is one standard deviation above the mean. This is this point, if this is mean, and D is the standard deviation. So this point is M plus D, which is one standard deviation above the mean. The question is saying, what percent of distribution is less than this? So that's mean this whole of the data set. So uh, we already know this is 64%. So what will be this remaining? That will be 16%. So this will be how much? This will be 64 plus 16%, which is? Which is how much? Sixty-eight plus sixteen, yes. This is sixty-eight plus sixteen, which is equal to eighty-four percent. Right. So the only takeaway is this is symmetric, so that there equal percentage on both sides. So within one standard division, there is sixty-four percent. So if this is whole is sixty-four on the either side, this is thirty-four and this is thirty-four. If whole is sixty-eight, this is thirty-four and thirty-four. So on this side, the whole must be 50%. So if this is 34, this one must be 16%, right? So the total percentage below one standard deviation, that will be 50% plus 34%, which is equal to 84%. Okay, so now let's solve the next one. Again, this is easy question and try to be quick. Let's call this, solve this question now. The figure will show a normal distribution with the mean M and standard deviation D 
including approximate percentage of the distribution corresponding to six region areas shown right so 30 on the right side we have 50 percent on the left side we have 50 percent and within one standard deviation 68 percent within two standard deviation 96 percent and within three standard deviation 400 percent suppose the height of a population of 3000 adult penguins are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 65 so let's consider mean as 65 and a standard deviation of five and let's call that as d which is five approximately how many of adult penguin are between 65 and 75 so what is very exactly 75 this is m plus d which is 65 plus five which is 70 and this is m plus 2d which is 65 plus 10 which is 75 so the question asks about this range so in this this is 34 percent and 14 percent 34 percent plus 14 percent which is equal to how much 48 percent so how many of the little penguins that will be 48 percent of this whole data set which is 3000 whole population so that will be so you can try to solve such mentally instead of using calculator so what is 50 percent of this that will be 1500 so what is one percent that is 32 percent that is 60 so just quickly subtract 60 from this that will be 1440 so the quantity so the first portion is they are 1440 adult penguins which are between 65 centimeter and 75 centimeter tall the next portion is if an adult penguin is chosen at random from the population approximately what is the probability that penguin height will be less than 60 okay so if this is 60 if we subtract 5 from this so that will be one standard deviation below the mean so 65 minus 5 which is equal to 60 so below that we have this portion which is 14 percent plus 2 percent 16 percent which in decimal form I can write 0 0.16. But the question asked for nearest 0 0.05, so that will be 0 0.15. So answer to this is 0 0.15. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Again, this is a very easy question. Just quickly solve this question. See, a random variable y is normally distributed with a mean of 200 and standard deviation of 10. Okay, so first of all, this is normally distributed. Now let's see. So let's kind of say this one standard deviation above, two above, and this is three above, and this is one below, two below, and three below. The question is that. The random area y is normally distributed with a mean of 200 okay and the standard deviation is 10. the question is saying the probability of the event that the value of y is greater than 200 so this will be one standard deviation above 200 plus 10 is 210 two standard deviation above that will be how much 200 uh, plus 2 into 10 that will be 220 so as we discussed within uh, in the normal distribution this is 34 percent 34 percent 14 percent 14 percent two percent and two percent so there are two percent of that in this right the question asks the probability that the e, uh, of the event that the value of y is greater than 220 so that is two percent so if I open this, how can I write this? This will be two by 100. And if I simplify further, so this will be one by 50. What is the quantity B? That is one by six. So straightforward, this is greater. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Yeah, someone earlier asked this question and try to solve this question. Then in the end, we will discuss.
Now let's see what is actually happening in the question. This is a common type of question which will be occurring in exam. And most of the students got this wrong. The reason is in this question, it is not mentioned that this is a, this is a normal distribution or linear distribution. So they consider this as a linear distribution and just got a wrong answer. If you see this in this question, in the distribution of values of the variable X, we are just provided with a distribution. The 50th percentile is 60 and 60th percentile is 70. We are just given the 60th percentile and 70, uh, 50th percentile and the 60th percentile. So this one is how much 60 and this one is 70. So we are asked to find the 55th percentile. Someone straightforward can assume this. If this is a linear distribution, this is 60, this is 70, so middle one must be 65. So boom, the answer is C, but that is wrong. We had just mentioned the distribution. This can be linear. So in that scenario, C is the answer. This could be the normal distribution. And if this is a normal distribution, in that scenario, so this will be on the right side. And let's suppose this is the 50th percentile is somewhere, uh, this is center, and this is 60th percentile. So if we consider the middle point, which is, uh, if this is 50 and this is 60, so this one is 55. But I told you in when we're discussing this, that this is not straight, this is something like this. So if you see the middle is not exactly here, this is somewhere to the, right, to the left side, right? So if this is 50, this is 60, this is 55, this is 50th percentile, this is 60th percentile. So 55th percentile will be some value less than 50, less than uh, 55, right? Just give an example, this is 60 and this is 70. This is 65. That will be some value less than 65, right? So in this scenario, we can't assume we are not provided with a distribution, whether that is linear or that is normal, right? So we, that's where the answer to this question is D. We can't determine. Okay, now just solve next question. You can solve this question later. This is again easy question. Yeah, try to solve this question. This is the other question we were discussing. This is another common type of asking question relevant to the normal distribution. And we are given that uh, standard, uh, the below figure below shows the standard normal distribution curve with a mean zero and standard deviation of one, including the approximate percentage of the distribution corresponding to the six regions. The random variable X is normally distributed with standard deviation 10 and value at uh, value X equal to 135 is that 20th percentile. First of all, let's see where is 20th percentile. 2%, 14 percent, 16. So 20th percentile will be somewhere here. So let's call this place a 20th percentile. And this is X and which is equal to 135 and let's call mean as m and next thing is what else we are provided with okay and standard deviation is 10 let's call that d which is equal to 10 so if we consider this at one standard deviation below the mean. So if I call this one center deviation below the mean equal to 135. So as D is equal to 10, in that scenario, mean will be equal to 145. But wait a minute. This is somewhere on the right, right side of this. This point is at least one standard deviation below the mean, but our 20th percentile is somewhere to the right. So that's mean this value, which is D, it is, will not be exactly 10. 
so here that because if we add 10 this will be at the one standard deviation below the mean but that is not one standard deviation below that is something less so that's why this value is less than 10 so if you are adding something less than 10 in 135 so that will be a bit closer to 140 getting the point because any we are just finding the value which is less than 145 and we have only one answer which is 140 so that was straight away the answer to this is a again the logic is 145 is possible that is one standard deviation below the mean but our value is to somewhere to the right side so that means d will not be 10 d will be somewhere some value less than 10 so in this scenario we need to check the value that is less than 145 and the answer which is provided one value that is less than 145 which is 140 that's why the answer to this is a okay so now let's move further mm. here just solve this question afterward we move to the continuous random variable just quickly solve this question okay now let's see what is actually happening here in this question the random variable x is normally distributed perfect normal distribution the value 650 and 850 are 60th percentile and 90th percentile so if we draw the distribution something like this a bell shaped curve this is a center which is 50th percentile 60th percentile that's what this is 60th percentile and this is 90th percentile for example and this thing corresponds to how much 650 and this thing corresponds to how much 850 and we are asked to find this 75th percentile and we're asked to find this 75th percentile so again i told you earlier the concept this is something like this right so if we draw this and take the center the center will not be exactly at the center that is somewhere on the left side right so if we go by center this is 750 but because this is not this is something that is more data is concentrated at center that's why the 75th percentile will be somewhere left of the 750 that's where the answer to this is quantity b and likewise the inverse case if i consider for example 10th percentile and 20th percentile if for example this value is 100 and this value is 200 just for example and if at the center there is 150 again this is something like this right so data is really not at center center will be somewhere to the right side so in that scenario the 15th percentile will be somewhere on the right of the right side of 150 so if we have a quantity comparison question having 15 percentile and 150 so in that scenario 15 percentile is greater right so these are two scenarios one on the right side and one on the left side if it is on the right side the middle percentile will be somewhere on the left side because of the more concentration at the center and if this on the left side the middle percentile will be on the right side so that will be greater than what is the exact middle value Again, okay, the, the concept which I told you right now and try to implement this and try to solve this later. I will attach this file in the description. Mm. Yeah, quickly solve this question. There are two questions for the histogram and two questions for the continuous and variable. Just four questions. Quickly solve this. Okay, let's solve this question. This is a histogram with the weight of cat in pounds and frequency. And I told you in the class, we're discussing the histogram. So there could be infinite values. There could be any value from six to eight with a frequency of three, unless in the question that is mentioned that that is integer, that is lower extreme, that is upper extreme. There could be any constraint given in the question. But if, the, if that is not mentioned, you need to consider the both extreme the smaller one and the greater one. So the question is saying the histogram above shows the distribution of weights in pound of 18 cats in a shelter. 
and a question asked for the median. First of all, total 18 cats, these are even. So what is the median? What will be the median? Median will just be the average of middle two values, the average of ninth value and a tenth value. So for time being, if I just consider the lower extreme of all of these. So this is three, just writing the frequency for easiness, three, two, four, eight, and one. So then when I add this up, eight, four, 12, 14, and 18. So just uh, considering, first considering the lower extreme. So that will be three times six and uh, two times 10 and then four times 12. And then eight time uh, 14, 14, how much eight times? And then one time 16. Now, what is the ninth value? What is 10th value? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is ninth value, this is 10th value. So median will be just average of these two values, 12 plus 14 divided by two, which is how much? Which is 13. Okay. Now, if I consider the other extreme, and because we are just concerned with the middle two values, which is 12 and 14. Now, if I change this, if I consider this value, other value, if I consider, for example, 13.5, and if I consider this as 14.5, yeah. If I consider this not 14, 15.5. So if ninth value is 13.5 and 10th value is 14, 15.5. Uh, so what is the average of that? That will be 14.5. So in that side, the quantity B is greater. That's where the answer to this is D. The takeaway is these are in the histogram, unless it is mentioned that you need to take extreme because in some time in exam, you will see that the question given that the upper extreme is not included. Just that there are several questions in which they have mentioned that 12 is not included in this, 14 is not included in this, 16 is not included. Then you can't include the upper extreme. But in this question, you can include. And the thing is, for median, as a total number are even, so median will be the average of middle two terms. And uh, for easiness, because median is only affected by, in this scenario, middle two terms, and if, it, if I take the lower extreme, 12 and 14, so in that scenario, median is 13. So quantity B is greater. In that scenario, quantity B is greater. But if I see the other extreme, and uh, if I consider one value from this, that is 13.5 and one value that is 15.5, in that scenario, quantity A is greater. Oh, I wrote this wrong. Quantity A is greater. That's why the answer to this question is D. This question is taken from the ATS guide. And uh, this is an interesting question. Similar to question what we have discussed so far. And I told you one shortcut for uh, the three sort of distribution. One is the symmetric, one is a bit concentrated to the left side, and one is a bit concentrated to the right side. And try to use that concept. Or you can use the, take the values and find the mean and the, uh, the median. It's up to you. Quickly solve this question. Okay, so one way is that you need to consider both extremes and try to find the median and mean that you can do that. But I told you three things in the in the lecture when we're discussing this, the histogram portion and uh, I told you that if our distribution is symmetric, just like this, if this is symmetric, in that scenario, mean is equal to median and that is equal to mod, which is not the case here. And if symmetric is 
something like this skewed to the left in that scenario what is the case in that scenario mode is greater than median which is greater than mean which is again not the case but if you see this is something like this this is skewed to the right side and in this scenario you can also prove this by considering the both of extremes that in this scenario mean is greater than mod uh, is greater than median which is greater than mod so straightforward the average will be greater than the median that's where the answer to this is a the other way is in such question just like we are given that in the course of experiment 95 measurements were recorded all of measurements were integers right so you can take any of the integer value just like in first there could be one two three four and five five possible options that could take the frequency of 15. so to find the you need to find the minimum and the maximum for the minimum first take the minimum value of all of these 1 6 11 16 21 26 and 31 and find the average and median and the second one take the maximum value from all of these and then trying to find the median and mean take the 5 10 15 20 25 30 and 35 you will get that in both scenario that mean is greater than median so if you have straightforward distribution, something like this, so you can straightforward use these in those instead of just calculating the mean and median. It's totally up to you. And if, now let's move to the last part, which is about the continuous random variable. And uh, I've seen plenty of such questions coming in the exam and try to solve this this is a very simple question the only thing you need to understand for the finding the median is try to find the point which divide the 50 percent of data set on the right side and 50 percent on the left side that is a median what is it is a median that divides the data set and just like in this take a point so that the 50 percent of areas on the right side and 50 percent areas on the left side now just quickly solve this question. So let's solve this now. The question is the random variable X has the following continuous probability distribution in the range from in which X is from zero to under root two as shown in the coordinate plane with X on the horizontal axis, perfect. The next thing is the horizon, the probability that X is less than zero and greater than Square root two is zero. So that's all of this mean all of the area and total probability uh, in this, in the continuous probability distribution, the area under the curve is actually the probability, right? And that's mean total area is under this. The total probability will be one. Now let's see the question is, what is the median of this? So in such cases, first of all, just find the total area. What is total area in this? This is a triangle. So what is this axis? This is under root two. What is this axis? What is your axis? Under root two and divide this by two, which is two by two, which is one. So first thing is total area is one. Now let's find a point so that we can have 50% area on the right side and 50% on the left side. So let's example, for example, if I call that point somewhere here as X and now let's call that A. And so that this distance from the right hand side is A. And one last thing, if this is A, what will be this vertical axis? To find that we need to see at first that this has slope of one. That's mean whatever is on the X axis that is also on the Y axis. And uh, what is that is slope? Slope is delta Y over delta X. So that is delta uh, square root two over square root two, which is equal to one slope is one. So as these are similar triangles, right? So if this is A, this will also be A. 
So what is the area of this thing? And we are considering a point in which divide the total area into 50%. So if total area is one, so this one has to be area of 50% of one, which is one by two. So what is the area of this thing? That will be A into A divided by two, which is one by two. This will cancel out. And A square is equal to one. That's mean A is equal to one. So this thing is one and this thing is also one. The question asks that what is the median of X? We need to find this distance, right? We know total distance is square root of two. So what is with this thing? That will be square root of two minus one, which is quantity C. So the concept is very simple. Just find a point which divide the data set into 50% on both sides. Okay, so now let's move to the last question, which will be last question for today regarding the random variable. And uh, just quickly solve this. So one thing that this is a whole function, something like this. Okay, now try to solve this question. Okay, so let's try to solve this question. And uh, let's see what is actually happening in this. The probability distribution function P of a continuous random variable Z is shown below. This function, okay. What is that is meant by this thing? Probability of Z written or equal to A is greater than three by four. Which are the following could be the possible value of A. Let's try to understand this. That first of all, if I consider any sort of distribution of this continuous, and for example, if this is A, this is B. So if I say probability of X greater than A less and less than B, that will be this thing, the area under the curve. Remember in the continuous random variable, the probability is area under the curve, one thing. And, and in this, greater than or greater than equal to both are same thing. And less, this is less than or less than equal to, greater than, greater than equal to both are also same thing, right? So it doesn't matter if I write X greater than A or X greater than or equal to A, both are same thing and x less than b or x less than or equal to b, right? And another thing is, if I write, for example, probability of x less than or equal to four is equal to one by two, that's mean the area under the curve from the minimum point to four, that will be equal to one by two. It's probability because the, pro the area under the curve in this scenario is the probability. And that's been the 50% of area. If I'm considering the whole area, which I consider at one, because the probability is one. Okay, now let's see in this question, what is that is happening that we have provided this uh, probability distribu uh, distribution function of a continuous random variable Z. So if I plot this, if I want to plot this, okay. So first of all, Z is from zero to 50. Let's take interval of 10, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So till 50, and th this direction is Z. And uh, if this is 50, so this will be 50 by 10, which is five. So let's call this one, two, three, four, and five. So this will be something here, which is 50, the y-axis and the x-axis and y-axis, which is five. So this will be something like this to this point. And afterward from 50 to 80, 60, 70, 80, 60, 70, 80. And if you just add, uh, write 80 in this, that will just move down to this zero. So this is the, uh, we get after plotting. And uh, what will be total area of this? If I 
try to form the area of this that will be two triangles what is first triangle that will be 50 into 5 divided by 2 and what will be for the second triangle that will be 30 into 5 divided by 2 and if you proceed further this will be around 200 so total area under the this is equal to 200 and uh, okay so what is meant by exactly meant by this thing probability of z greater than or equal to a is greater than 3 by 4 that's mean from point a to this is because this is greater than or equal to right so minimum from a to the last point the total area under the curve is 3 by 4 of a total area so for example if i consider a point here and this area is 1 by 4 and remaining area is 3 by 4 so we're asked to find these value so a could be any value from the point at which the the total area become 1 over 4 so that after our total area is 3 by 4 so what will be this point let's if i consider this point as for example as y so what will be this i know the function of this that is z by 10 so this will be y by 10 and if total area is 200 what will be 1 by fourth of area that is equal to 50 so just find the area of this that is y into y by 10 divided by 2 is equal to 50 so that's mean y square is equal to 1000 and y is something like 30 something and that is something like 30, 31 point something and we need to find the values on the x-axis after this so that could be any value greater than 31 point something you see the option b c d and e so all of these four options are possible